Hi there, I'm Caleb Jones. I am the uh, mass media engineering instructor and uh, video production specialist here at Collins Career Technical Center. And uh, I thought it might be a good idea for us to talk about a couple of do's and don'ts since so many of us are having to do some distance learning um, challenges, we'll say, uh, due to the COVID-19 um, virus outbreak. Um, Many of us are having to get familiar with uh, Zoom or Google Meet or uh, even, you know, how to use your webcam, you know? Um, what's the best way to get good audio or what's the best way, you know, to, what's best practices when you're, when you're doing one of these meetings? And so I thought it might be a good idea to go over a few things. And so I got three, I got three, uh, you know, things to talk about. Um, and so let's just jump in here and, and take a look at uh, uh, some best practices when you're uh, doing distance learning. All right, the first thing we wanna talk about is lighting. Uh, and I have snuck into uh, <laughs> somebody's office here. This is actually uh, Mr. Schaefer's office here in the front of the building. And uh, I just thought it would be a good idea to just use somebody's office, um, just a run-of-the-mill office, because most of you guys will probably do be doing something similar in a room uh, similar to this. So uh, the first thing I would say is you want to use natural lighting as much as you can. Uh, when, you talk, when you're thinking about lighting and you're thinking about uh, using your webcam, um, you want to throw as much light at that as, as pretty much you can. Um, you know, those are not great cameras, but uh, they can do a pretty good job as long as they're not super dark and you put them in a super dark place. And so, um, you know, you want to you want to give them a good bit of light, but you want to be considerate about how you put the light on them. And so, what you don't want to do is um, you don't want to have your webcam. Uh, you don't want to put the light. You don't. You don't want to shoot yourself with the the window behind you, and the webcam in front. And so, what that would do would be it would silhouette your face. Instead, you want to kind of flip that around opposite. And so, what you'll want is the window in front of you, and then the webcam facing away from the window and the window illuminating your face. Um, and that's gonna give you a nice good result. And that's really what I've done here uh, in this scenario, okay? And so I'm gonna show you that right now. And so in this case, uh, you can see that I am in front of a window in Mr. Schaefer's office. Uh, the window is in front of me, the webcam is uh, just above the, the screen here. Uh, and the webcam, the back of the webcam is to the window. And so I've got a lot of natural light coming in uh, and is hitting my face, uh, but it's, it's not hitting the camera, right? And so you want the light hitting your face and not the camera. And so I've got a nice uh, illuminated face here on my, and so I can just hit, uh, if I join now, Okay, you can see I've got a nice uh, illuminated face and I get uh, the camera does a good job uh, of capturing what it needs to capture. Um, and I've got a, you know, it's, it's everything we can see that you need to see uh, and it's doing a good job because we've got a lot of natural light coming in. Again, what we don't want is uh, to silhouette you don't want to silhouette yourself uh, as the subject. And so uh, you want to make sure that the light, the natural light is hitting your face and not hitting the camera. The camera is pointing at your face, the light is pointing at your face, okay? So use natural light if, you, if at all possible, um, you know, but if you're, uh, if you're in a situation where you can't use natural light, artificial light's okay and using indirect light is, is okay as well. Um, if you are using indirect light, uh, or even if your um, natural light is creating too much shadow, um, then you want to use maybe a secondary source or even something like uh, a whiteboard or what we would refer to as a bounce board. You could even use poster board and just put it opposite of the light source and so that it bounces light off of that onto your face and so that you get a nice soft light on your face. 
uh, to help alleviate some of that shadowing. And so it doesn't look so stark you know, or, or any kind of crazy shadows or anything that would be distracting. And that's what you're trying to eliminate, anything that would be too crazy distracting. Um, and I would say, um, you know, just be careful uh, about how much, again, the, the camera can only be as effective as how much light it get, you give it. And so uh, just make sure that you're giving it plenty of light. It can, it can, it can give you good results the more light you give it. Um, and that's what's, you know, that really makes a difference between an expensive camera and a, and a less expensive camera. It typically, a is, is, uh, more expensive camera can do better in a low light situation. So with webcams, you know, you want to make sure you give it some, a, a good a bit of light. Um, I would talk about, too, framing. When we're talking about this situation, you know, um, when you're thinking about lighting and you're thinking about putting yourself in camera, like right now, as I'm talking, um, I have the way, you know, when we talk about framing, we're talking about the frame that, that we're in. Um, and the way that I frame this shot, as I'm speaking to you, if you think about uh, a tic-tac-toe, an imaginary tic-tac-toe board uh, on our screen here, um, I have aligned myself. Think about it as if you have uh, three vertical quadrants, okay, and three horizontal quadrants, right? And so you kind of have an imaginary tic-tac-toe board, and what you're wanting to do is place yourself in one of those uh, intersecting points of the vertical quadrants. Uh, and that's just going to look nice. Um, it's going to look really good. Um, typically, a center frame shot like this uh, just looks a bit more formal and it looks like an anchor, like a TV anchor. So if you're giving information, that's fine. Uh, psychologically, that's just how people are used to receiving information is center frame. If you want it to feel more conversational, you just simply come over uh, to either one side or the other and it's and it feels just more conversational the other thing i would say about framing or staging your shots is be careful what you have in the background of your shot uh, just like in here uh, and this is kind of why i chose mr schaefer um, and not to pick on him but this was a pretty good example be careful what you have behind you uh, when you're doing your distance learning uh, because what you have behind you may be uh, great for you uh, in your office or whatever, uh, but it may be distracting uh, to your viewers. Um, you know, they, as you're teaching through something or you're, you're discussing something, uh, just keep in mind that uh, they might lose track and be more interested in what's being posted up here. And so you might want something that may be a bit more clean, uh, a bit more plain. And so keep that in mind. Um, you know, maybe something that contrasts or makes you pop off the screen. Uh, if you can keep that dark, keep yourself light. Uh, that could also help with the lighting as well and help the camera delineate between what's dark and what's light. And so I would say that would also be helpful uh, when you're using your webcam uh, at home or whatever, whatever you're choosing. Now, the last point uh, I would say is you would want to consider your audio. 80% um, of good video is audio, and most people don't realize that. Um, and so I would say small spaces are best. Um, if at all possible, if at all possible, try to find the smallest room you can that's filled with the most fluffy uh, cushions and, and um, clothes and whatever carpet anything anything on the walls that you can uh, because what you don't want is a big open space that has a lot of hard surfaces because the sound is really going to be um, it's going to be very um, distracting and it's going to be bouncing all over the place and it's going to be hard for your people to hear and it'll be it will be very distracting for them to concentrate and it, and it, and it wears on people um, and, it's, and it's almost overwhelming. When you listen to that for 30 minutes or so, somebody talking in that type of environment, it's, 
it's almost overstimulating. And so you want a nice, quiet, you want to find the smallest room possible. I mean, shoot, I, I would even recommend find a, 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 cl a coat closet in your house and put a lamp in there and, and just set on the floor with your laptop or whatever. Uh, that's gonna give you great audio. You know, with these webcams, it's gonna give you great audio. Um, the smaller the room, the better. Keep your environment small. Keep it small. Um, try to limit the hard spaces that are in that environment. Um, if, if at all possible, put something behind you. Uh, put something uh, on the walls if you can. Uh, any, any kind of cloth, any kind of porous, uh, soft material. Uh, so small rooms are best. Um, closer is better. The closer you can be to that mic and to that camera, uh, you know, the better that's going to be. And so I think that that would be, that would be best. So uh, just keep that in mind. And hopefully uh, these few tips and tricks uh, will help you. Good light, good audio, uh, keep a clean, neat background, and uh, have fun, right? All right. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jonescr, J-O-N-E-S-C-R, at collins-cc.edu. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. All right, I just wanted to start uh, this video just showing you guys um, how to use Google Meet. Um, if you haven't used Google Meet, it's great, especially if uh, you are an employee of Collins. You have a collins-cc.edu email address, which makes you a uh, G Suite user. And so you have all the um, advantages of having the G Suite. And so part of that is the Google Meet. Um, and so how do you get to Google Meet? Well, let me show you a couple easy ways. If you just open up a browser, and I'm just on Google Chrome, as you can see here, and I'm just going to type in meet.google.com. It's just going to pull right up here, and it's going to ask me to join or start a meeting. Um, only people who have a G Suite account, uh, which you do if you have a Collins email address, um, then you can start a meeting. Uh, if you do, if you're trying to use your personal email address, you will not be able to start a Google Meet meeting. Uh, you could start a Google Hangout meeting, uh, but it's not the same. Uh, and so um, the Google Meet uh, meetings are larger in scope and size. And so you can have more people join your meeting. And so we'll just click on this join. And then you can, let's just say, um, just for example, LPN 102. Uh, and we can just say, um, you know, Friday, I don't know, uh, 1 you know, 1 p.m. or something like that. You can name it, obviously, whatever whatever you want. And it looks like there's a character that doesn't want us to use. So it looks like the colon it didn't want us to use. So, <clears throat> okay. So that's one way. And you just hit continue and it's getting things started. Uh, and it's gonna ask me to, I have my camera uh, down here. Hello. Um, I could move it up here like this so you can see. Um, but um, so you just hit join now and there it is LPN Friday 1 p.m. And then you can start adding your people or you can um, use this. Um, this is your uh, this is a URL that you can copy this link and you can choose just this copy joining info and post that in your Google Classroom or in your Moodle Classroom, however you would like to communicate to your class. Um, or you can also, if they if they really don't have a way of getting on the internet, you can also have them just dial in on their phone and just listen. And so they can still participate in the class, which is really nice. Um, so you can do it that way. Um, and so you can, or you can manually add people. So I'm just going to close that out because who wants a crazy close picture of me? Um, 
All right, so there's that. I want to show you before we go through some other functionalities. I'm just going to close out this meeting. I'm going to close that out. And uh, I'm gonna, just going to show you one other way. I'm going to put this back down. I'm going to show you one other way of <clears throat> getting to or creating a um, Google Meet. Um, and it's really simple. If you just go over to your waffle over here um, that everybody should have, once you, once you open up Google Chrome and you log into your account, uh, you should be able to go to your waffle, which is your Google apps and just go to your calendar. And this is a really nice feature. So if you go to your calendar and you, um, just go to a date. And so let's just look at, um, we'll just say Friday. We'll shoot for the Friday here. Um, and we'll just say Friday at, let's say, let's say Friday at like, um, uh, We'll just do Friday at one o'clock again. So Friday, we'll just create it here. Friday at one o'clock, we're going to have a, um, you know, um, what do we say? LPN, you know, 102 uh, class, uh, you know, meeting or however, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm going to click on more options there. And you can see here, um, this little icon that looks like a camera and you can see it says add conferencing and this is really nice because you can click this and just choose hangouts meet and you can see you can have up to 250 participants there and you can click on that to get even more options and so here's your meet id and so you can copy and paste that and there's the phone number and you can go ahead and get that ahead of time and you can put that out on your google classrooms if you're using google classrooms or in moodle if you so choose to uh, or you can do a live stream you can do it that way uh, and so that gives you even more flexibility which is really nice and so this is just another way you can schedule out all of your Google Meets. You don't have to do them on the fly. If you want to say, well, we're going to meet every Thursday at this time, you can go ahead and go in your calendar and um, go ahead and schedule all of those, um, those, uh, you know, those live meetings, those, those Google meetings, your video chats, your video meetings. Uh, you can schedule those on your Google calendar. It's just another way and it automatically creates that Google uh, meet session for you and it will send out those notifications and so that's a really nice way of doing that and this is particularly nice too if you've shared this calendar in your google classroom or your moodle classroom if you shared the google calendar inside there uh this will it'll show up uh on that on that calendar as well for everybody and so that's that's also an added bonus and so let's just go back into um one of those i'm just going to cancel that out because we don't need to do that i'm just gonna leave that page and so let's go back in here and i'm just gonna go back and just create a another google meet again and we'll just call this test uh just for and i'm gonna move my camera so that, okay, okay. <clears throat> all right and I'll click join and I don't need to add any people. So you'll just see me full screen uh, for right now. But the, I want to just run you through quickly uh, some great, um, some great things that, that um, just so I can get, I want to make sure I have all of my screen options here. So let me just readjust my screen size. And I want to show you guys just all of these great options that you have. Um, this is this would end your meeting, right? And so you can change or turn off or mute your microphone right here. You can turn off your camera right here. So if you need to pause or uh, take a break or something like that without ending your meeting, you can simply just turn off the camera, right? So the meeting is still going on, but the camera is just not active. Right. And so I can activate the camera again and there it's back on and I can do the same with the microphone. Um, the great, the really nice feature with Google Meet is you have captions and so you can turn closed captioning on and you can see that it will 
um, it will start to, it should start to, uh, anyways, it should start to uh, add closed captioning to uh, the meeting. And as you're talking, it should uh, start to populate. Uh, and it may just be delayed, um, but anyways, but that's how you would turn that on. It's just that, that CC there, so we'll turn that off. Um, let's see, the other options, it, the, something I think is really nice and really important that you want to get to familiarize yourself with is this present now section down here in the lower right corner. Uh, and this is just going to allow you to, um, if you have a secondary screen, if you have something on your desktop that you want to show, uh, it'll allow you to present, it gives you two options. You can, you can present your entire screen or you can present just a window. And so if you choose entire screen, so like I can go to, um, let's go to like screen two, um, then I can share that. Um, yeah. And so I'm presenting that and I can just hit stop presenting. Um, which is really nice. And I can add, you know, let me, I can put something up on. Uh, oh, it's installing an update. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. So this is going to pop up. And let me just. No, I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to put this over here on my second screen. And so I'll just choose that again. So we can just do a window. So I can choose that as my window. And so there, uh, it, show, it's, it should show that window. It'll present to everybody this Firefox window. Hey, this is Firefox or whatever. So I can close that out and boom, it, it puts me right back to my camera as the default. And so this is a really nice option uh, when you're presenting. And let me give you something in conjunction with the present now function in Meet, uh, which is the, um, along with our G Suite setup, we have another um, tool inside of G Suite called, uh, uh, it's called uh, Jamboard is the name of it. It took me, I, I, I couldn't remember the name of it, uh, but let me, let's pull that up. Uh, and I'm just gonna open up another tab. Let me open up another tab here. Um, and I'm just gonna pull that over onto this screen so that you guys can see that. And this is really nice. And so I'm just gonna, um, on, again, on my waffle, on my second screen, uh, and I'll just present, uh, I'm gonna, let me, I'm gonna pull this over on this screen so you guys can see this. So on my waffle, uh, and it should be the same on your waffle, uh, if you just scroll down through here and you see on these tools, you'll see one that says Jamboard, right? Uh, and this is a great tool. And you want to just click on that. And you can just add one down here in this bottom right corner is an orange circle with a plus, And that's how you add Jamboards. And then any Jamboards that you've created in the past what should be, you know, over here as well. And I, I had one I played around with. Uh, it's untitled. I didn't title it, but, uh, so I'm just going to drag this over to the, my second screen and then I'm going to use this in conjunction with Google meet. So I'm going to just choose, um, present a window and I'm going to present my Jamboard, which is going to be great because, um, now I can use this as, essentially as a, as a virtual whiteboard. And so, you know, I'm going to change this to like a marker. I can change the color and I can, you know, draw maybe here's a cochlea inside of our ear or something like that. Right. And I can use a laser pointer and say, OK, well, there would be the oval window of the cochlea or something like that. Right. So anyways, this is really, really great. Um, and maybe maybe you don't want to draw something. Um, but maybe you do want to present here. I can erase that or I can just clear the whole frame just by clicking up here, clear frame. Uh, maybe I want to add an image. Okay. And so I can just go, uh, I'm just going to click on that icon and choose image search. And, uh, let's see, uh, maybe I want to find a picture of the ear. Um, and I want to present on that. Um, and I can just bring in a whole, uh, which is great here. I'm going to show this to you guys. I'm not sure if you can see that. 
So I'm just gonna, so again, this is what Jamboard looks like. And so, um, you know, I can draw, I can bring in a picture, I can uh, use a laser pointer um, where, it, where it, if I just draw on it, it, it's, it disappears. Uh, all this stuff is, is really, uh, really nice. Um, and you can just clear the frame. Uh, is essentially it's a virtual whiteboard. Um, and you're, you're casting that uh, onto in, in your Google Meet. And so your people can, your, your people who are in the meet with you can see that. Um, and that's a really nice, nice function to have. And so you can, you know, if you're thinking about like Google Slides or um, Prezi or um, the Jamboard, or even if you've done stuff in screen uh, the Screencastify, you know, and pre-recorded stuff. I mean, you can do all these things um, here on Google Meet and just load it up there. And so this is this is a really a great tool um, in this weird time that we're in with the COVID virus, uh, where we have to do in all this distance learning. So, anyways, hopefully this is helpful. And just uh, uh, one other thing I, I would I would say. Um, which is really nice is this uh, little chat box. And so um, if, if, you're, if you are streaming uh, your class, uh, don't forget to open that up and make sure that you can you know, see what people are talking about and responding and being interactive. That, that makes uh, your class uh, a lot better. It's, uh, you know, people like to interact. You can also change the grid view. Um, now I don't have anybody in my meeting right now, so I'm full view. Uh, but you can change your grid view uh, as well. And so, um, and the way that you do that is, is these, these three little buttons down here at the very right. Uh, and you can, um, you can record your meeting, you can change your layout, and that's what you're gonna be looking at. And so if, if you wanna change the way that that's laid out right now it's set in auto but you can change the way that that's laid out um and so um if you want to change the way how you know it's it's the people are displayed in your meeting uh you can do it that way and so anyways so hopefully that helps and that takes you through just some basics on google meet so um thank you for watching hopefully this helps if you've got any questions, feel free to email me at jonescr at collins-cc.edu.